Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel, and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories down in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is, they just lost 10 million. I had just recently been fired from my prior job when this happened in 2015. Due to my less than stellar success in channel partner sales, they asked me to start working weekends at the time my dad received his cancer diagnosis. Due to my dad's illness, this was obviously out of the question, so we said our goodbyes and parted ways. There were no harsh feelings, but the fact that I am now jobless is frankly terrible. I accepted a fantastic job offer from a sizable company a month or two later that required me to move across the country, but it was worth it because my father seemed to be recovering and the cancer seemed to be in remission, so I felt okay with moving away. At the time, I lived about 30 minutes from my parents. The new company was a sizable, short-term lending company with over 1,000 locations across the country. I wasn't thrilled about the prospect of working for one of these businesses, but I reasoned that since no one was pressuring them into taking the loan, they probably knew what they were signing up for. Critical note. My primary responsibility at Company A was to form alliances in order to refer borrowers who were looking for loans but didn't meet the requirements for a traditional bank loan, etc., to us. In just a few months, I swiftly increased the monthly revenue to $1 million or more. Everyone was friendly, and it seemed like a wonderful job. But one ex-army jerk, who I'll name Sergeant A-Hole, made snide remarks about everyone and kept track of the time, reporting you to HR if you arrived at 9.05 instead of 9 a.m., or left at 4.45 p.m. instead of 5 p.m., for example. Auditing the third-party apps to confirm the loans that actually occurred and the loan balance amount to determine the affiliate referral commission was part of my job. Basic due diligence. However, when I read the loan agreement they signed and the terms and conditions that came with it, I began to notice warning signs everywhere. People receiving welfare or social security taking out personal loans against their car titles with repayment terms they would never be able to afford. Old women borrowing money against their SS benefits to help pay for their grandchildren's school supplies and other heartbreaking situations. With a background in business law and finance from college, I knew they were doomed the moment they signed the contract. They would eventually lose their only car through repossession and be required to sign over social security checks to make payments on the loan, as they regrettably agreed to that in that contract, among other terrible things. I began bringing up this issue with every executive or leader who would listen. They all nodded in agreement, but nothing changed. We probably all have a deep-setted negative feeling about this firm, but it is our source of income. My instinct tells me at this point to record this and retain it for whatever reason. At the moment, I had no idea what I would do with it. I just had a strong want to. I stayed and began gathering any and all information I could on them pressuring people, even those who were illiterate, to sign the loan. While conducting retail audits, I witnessed this several times in person, essentially closing the loan utilizing sleazy used car salesman techniques. Company A deliberately omitted the information that the 28% interest rate is monthly, not annual, and that you effectively have to close the loan every month it isn't paid in full and sign a new one every month with new interest, carryover from the previous balance, plus new fees, several hundred dollars per new loan, essentially every month, as well as other information. Overall, Company A just took advantage of desperate, financially uneducated people, fully aware that they couldn't ever pay off the loan, and that I detested. Everyone in leadership who knew this was going on and essentially stated, this is our business practice, it's legal. 
even though I was fully aware that it was neither legal nor ethical. I went with my intuition and bought one of those tiny handheld scanners. I printed down every CFPB or federal infraction I found, scanned it, and saved it or assembled it at home on an SD card. My birthday is coming up in a few months, and I had planned to take a week off work to celebrate with my family back home. At this time, my dad is very ill, so I realized this might be my final birthday with him. We lived it up, did everything we could think of as a family, and it was fun. Definitely one of the top five family memories of all time. When it was time to return to work in the other state, I didn't want to go, but I promised my mother that I would return home immediately if she needed me to. I returned from PTO, and the following Monday... My mother calls to say that my father is in very bad shape. I tell my awesome boss about it, and he advises me to go home and return when I'm ready. He is an awesome, amazing man with a huge heart, and for that response, he will always hold a special place in my heart. He understood that work was not important at the time. For context, Sergeant A-Hole was passed up for Awesome Boss's job, and it was instead handed to a fantastic boss, so he had it out for the rest of us from the start and wanted that job and was determined to acquire it by any means necessary. On the second day at home, Tuesday, Awesome Boss calls to inform me that he has been sacked. Sergeant A-Hole is now my boss. Awesome Boss informs me that Sergeant A-Hole will probably fire me too once I get back. With everything else I was dealing with, he just didn't want me to be blindsided. A-1 kind of guy. Apparently, Sergeant A-Hole complained to the CEO and COO about his lax approach to his team, letting me just leave without approval, etc. Now that Sergeant A-Hole is my boss... I stay through the funeral before leaving to return to the concert. After waiting for ten minutes, Sergeant A-Hole summons me to his room and informs me that I breached company policy by taking unapproved time off and that we must speak with HR. He responded, I'm sorry that happened, but company policy doesn't excuse that. After I explained what had occurred, my dad had passed away by a burial my mom was upset etc. Since I've only been here for four months and had spent all of my savings moving here for the job, the HR lady felt so horrible that I had to be fired, by the COO nonetheless. I explained to her that this really puts me in a precarious financial situation, since I've only been there for a few months and I'm not yet eligible for unemployment benefits. She promises to fight hard to get me some severance pay. Well, you wouldn't qualify anyways. You're being fired for non-compliance and excessive absences, adds Sergeant A-Hole. Okay, what the F, man? The following day, HR phones me and says Sergeant A-Hole spoke with the COO to make sure that I didn't receive any severance. I've been in my 12-month lease for five months and I'm now jobless and broke. Without my go-to guy, my dad, I'm up a creek without a paddle in this scenario. I had to move home to live with my mom, sell the majority of my belongings and pack. Now for the just retaliation. The moment of truth has arrived. I called my amazing employer to ask for his feedback and ideas and he offered to help. So now we have a team. I had a database of questionable practices that have violated CFPB regulations in my head. We spent the following weeks compiling a sizable file to send to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau regarding Company A's unfair and predatory lending practices, in which we were partially complicit, but both voiced our concerns. We knew we were a part of this monster and felt that it was only fair to make amends. I gave everything I had to my awesome boss, who is now a teammate, Together, we gave the CFPB everything we had seen in the physical locations, all the documents I had that were incriminating, and two thoroughly written statements of our concerns about Company A for their investigation under the condition that we remain anonymous. 
Although we never heard back and believed nothing would come of it, we made every effort to make up for the wrong we had helped to cause. Unbeknownst to us, there were thousands of consumer complaints made against Company A. Awesome Boss informed me that he had heard from them and that the information we gave had helped them strengthen their claims. About five months later, in early 2016, Awesome Boss calls to tell me that the CFPB has phoned and that something is about to happen. This resulted in a significant consumer protection inquiry against Company A, which at the time was unknown to me and my awesome boss. But after a further several months passed with no sign of it, I assumed they had recruited some of the best lawyers in the business to put an end to it. That is, until June 2016. At my mother's house, I was drinking coffee and filling out job applications when I heard the name of Company A mentioned on CNBC. I turned to look and saw that they were facing significant fines and legal costs and that their business would have to essentially cease operations until the matter was handled. All thanks to Sergeant A-Hole, they ended up paying fines of almost $10 million legal costs of over $20 million, and lost out on about $50 million in revenue while the government put the brakes on their operation. I later learned from a former co-worker that Sergeant Ahol was fired and thrown under the bus for failing to report employee complaints to the executive team, but they knew full well. I repeatedly warned the COO that what we were doing was probably illegal, but they made the sergeant the scapegoat. Numerous ongoing class action lawsuits and local government proceedings against them continue to this day. But personally, it worked out pretty nicely for me. It felt good to see that cesspool of a company get their comeuppance on behalf of everyone they lied to, stole from, and screwed over. Mom was so glad that I was back home. She was having such a difficult time without dad around. They were married for 35 years. I used my downtime to learn a new career, which pays much better. I love my new career, and I'm now living the post-company A life. I was delighted to see this floating turd flushed, because, as my grandmother used to say, some turds sink, and some float to the top. But in the end, they all get flushed. A-hole was pretty selfish, but it was also pretty dang heartless to have no sympathy, knowing that you'd effectively lost a huge chunk of your life. Joyful karma had caught up with him. It takes courage to oppose such practices, especially when it means risking one's own livelihood. Your determination to document violations and report them to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau demonstrates a strong sense of fairness and a desire to make a positive impact. The fact that your efforts contributed to a serious investigation and subsequent fines against Company A is a testament to the power to stand up for what is right. It's nice to see justice done, and it must be nice to see the collapse of a company that has done so much harm to others. In addition, your personal growth and transition to a new career that you love is an inspiring outcome. It's great to hear that you were able to support your mother through a difficult time and find fulfillment in your own new path. The next story is, Now this smug Karen lost her job. I once had a job at this eatery in the heart of the city. It was a terrible job. But it was a job. We are blasted one day. Since this burger joint is located directly behind a baseball field, it usually happens on game nights. But this particular day was different. To begin with, I was already irate. I had to open the entire front of the restaurant by myself in less than 30 minutes since a coworker who thought he was the manager arrived an hour late. This was necessary because customers were already waiting in the parking lot. The coworker arrives, but I keep quiet. Well then, carry on with your day. As the day rolls on, I arrive for my shift. After a competition, soccer teams visit. 
I'm referring to 100 players, and there is a line outside the entrance. We're taking orders, cleaning tables, putting orders together, delivering them, serving drinks. I did this when I was 18, and making milkshakes on shifts like this, so some of the kitchen staff had to drop everything and assist the other front of house staff, including myself, with delivering orders. Clientele was excellent. We had no problems because all of the players who had arrived were extremely friendly. No rushing, no grumbling, nothing. Simply a good day. They also gave us a wonderful gratuity, which we greatly appreciated. At this point, I should probably disclose that we accept DoorDash orders, which is where Karen comes into play. For the benefit of those of you who are unaware, DoorDashers are individuals who are compensated by a customer to go get food from a restaurant and bring it to them. We go into our routine rush, and I'm multitasking and working quickly with three other coworkers to keep everyone pleased. The DoorDasher tablet vibrates. I agree and get to work on the order preparation. Mind you, a milkshake was included. I won't make the milkshake just yet because I have no idea when this woman will arrive. While we are assisting other clients, she arrives with the remaining portion of the order. I'll tell you about this woman, a Karen in the truest definition. She had the normal Karen haircut and freaky white walker eyes. I'm referring to brilliant blue eyes that can instantly see into your soul. Clearly false because they were the same shade of blue as the Twitter logo and nearly solid. She had eyes like the gates of hell, I swear. I will just refer to her as Karen from now on. She asks me how much longer it will be as she grows impatient. I go to start the milkshake, offering my apologies and letting her know that it won't be long. But she begins to lose her cool with my employees, and as I pass her to retrieve the remaining items from the DoorDash order, she begins to lay it on me. I was being yelled at for not having the milkshake ready and for costing her in tips. She had pricey color contacts in and was sporting a pair of Lululemon yoga pants. Even without the extra three dollars, she could manage. A sort of manager approaches to speak with her and she gives him the name. CC emerges and describes the circumstance. She rejects his explanation and begins yelling in front of 200 people about how she won't get tips, and how difficult is it to make one milkshake? The customary, I want to speak to the manager, response from Karen is delivered, and that manager just so happens to be C. She's informed that he is the manager. She responds to his request to leave by repeatedly calling C a coward as she goes on. Karen eventually departs. I start looking into it, since I'm furious about this moron coming in and making everyone feel uncomfortable, and it turns out that you may find the prior DoorDashes who entered the restaurant to take orders if you have access to the tablet. I walk to the tablet to look up the doorman's name, because I can recall the name of the customer who placed the order. The order history and information have her name and phone number. I spoke with the DoorDash firm, explaining the abuse we'd received from Karen and providing them with her name and phone number while claiming she was from Redacted City. They promised to check into it. We never saw her again because she accepted our orders on a regular basis before. They later called me to let me know. As a later inside joke, we occasionally called each other cowards as we all continued on our journey. Edit. I feel I need to add that this woman also sent us a strongly worded email in which she expressed her rage, said that she had lost her job as a result of our actions, and revealed that she was aware that one of us had said something. It's very hard to work in catering. I think there is not a single day when a Karen doesn't come into a cafe to annoy everyone. They are always dissatisfied with something. I get the impression that such people just have nowhere to put their energy, and bothering people for them is entertainment of some sort. I think it's fair that Karen had to suffer the consequences of her behavior, and it's also a reminder that our actions have repercussions. Hopefully, she can reflect on her actions and learn from this experience. 
In the end, it's great to see that OP and his co-workers were able to support each other and find some humor in the situation, even if it was at the Karen's expense. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.